Welcome to Glorious Botafogo, your number one source of Botafogo news in English. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out. Leave a like and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought about these last two matches. Yes, the last two, because I did not do a video when Botafogo played Vitória in a match that was an official match for the Brazilian Cup. Botafogo played the team from Bahia at the Newton Santos Stadium and won one goal to zero. I was not able to watch that match live, but I did watch it later on. There were some, some good moments. Um, Cuiabano had a rather good start, um, a good debut for the club. Um, the rest of the team played fine. I mean, there's really nothing much to say. The rest of the team played fine. Um, again, we are dealing with the consequences of selling Jean-Desson and then having Mateus Nascimento get a serious hamstring injury that was <clears throat> that needed um, surgical intervention. And then Chiquinho was injured. Uh, thankfully, no surgical intervention needed, and he's got about three more weeks to go. Then yesterday, on Sunday, Botafogo played Bahia, the other team from the state of Bahia in the Serie A, but this time for the Brasileirão 2024. Botafogo had started the round in first with nine points, and now the club is in third because we lost to Bahia at home, making it the end of the five consecutive wins at home. If Botafogo would have won, it would have been six consecutive wins under Arthur Jorge. But again, Botafogo paying the price for the injuries of its forwards and the sale of Jean Nesson. I was watching the match here and there, uh, to be honest. I had it on my phone because... Botafogo TV now has international broadcast if you live outside of Brazil. So any other country, except if you are in Brazil, you can now watch an international broadcast with the narration of legendary Hobby Porto, the great Botafoguense, the great Botafogo supporter that is also a top tier a sports commentator and narrator. So Hobby was part of this pilot um, program, I guess you, you could say. I was able to, to listen to the match in English, uh, listening to Hobby on my way to work. Um, so did I watch the whole thing? No, I watched most of the first half and then I didn't get to watch any of the second half. I watched highlights and I saw some things that were concerning. Uh, the first one was how Diego Hernandez and Alexander Barbosa was substituted in because center back Alexander Barbosa was subbed in as a forward, as a striker. And the, um, the reasoning behind this substitution of this move was because Barbosa was good in the air and he could have won a header or two or, you know, used a header for a pass. And Botafogo scored was kind of more or less how Jafinho's goal uh, came to life. It was a rebound, a hit off the um, Bahia player, and it landed on Jafinho's feet, and he scored. But it did not work. But, you know, if it had worked, we would have all been over here. The media would have been saying, oh, my God, Arthur Jorge is a, is a genius. Arthur Jorge is a visionary. Arthur Jorge is a new Guardiola because of this change, and it, it, it didn't work out. Unfortunately, it did not work out because Botafogo lost. The second Bahia goal, in, in my opinion, was a collective failure of the defensive end, it was a collective failure of Hernandez not following the guy because he's not used to be playing. That. I think Hernandez was playing right back. Hernandez is a right winger slash center attacking midfielder. So not only is he not used to playing in that position, so he did not follow the guy. Lucas Alte uh, pushed forward, but Hernandez didn't, so left the gap. So then Lucas Alte had to follow frantically the, um, the Bahia striker to no avail because he scored. And then John 
I believe was one of the main facilitators for this goal because he is off camera, but you can see that by the time the Bahia guy gets to the ball, I believe, I personally believe that John had the chance to come out and punted the ball away from there. I think there was enough time, but he hesitated. He hesitated again. And then by the time he started backpedaling into the box, into the 18 yard box, the Bahia striker dribbled around John and scored, giving them that sour, sour victory, leaving a very sour taste in Botafogo fans' mouth because the supporters have been doing a great job, um, you know, coordinating the party at the Newton Santos and making beautiful mosaics. It's been happening since last year. Uh, it's happened before then. But, you know, the team just did not perform well. I heard, um, especially in the second half, again, I didn't I didn't watch the second half. That's when Cuyabano came in. I just spoke great of Cuyabano. I just spoke well of him uh, due to his match against Vitoria da Bahia. But I heard that the second half, his second half at least, was not good. You know, he didn't perform good. There were other other few players that uh, that also did not perform good. And just overall, I think it was just one of those one of those matches in which nothing really works, no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do. So that is a loss in the Brasileirão, a win in the Copa do Brasil. Botafogo will play Vitória da Bahia once more, but now at their home at the Bahadão Stadium which is sort of a, uh, a boiling pot, if you want to call it that way, because the supporters are close to the pitch and they are loud. They are, um, they are very, very passionate supporters over there. Botafogo will play at their home May 21st at 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time. I do not know if we're going to have an um, international broadcast for that one. Botafogo's next match is going to be at um, at the Newton Santos again this coming Wednesday. It's going to be one of the, the, the last match that Botafogo will play at Rio de Janeiro in a row um, against Liga de Quito, LDU from Quito, Ecuador. An official match for the Libertadores group stage match four out of six and a win at home, it is of extreme, extreme, extreme importance because Botafogo was able to close the gap in that group and saw the other teams plateau. So we're right there. So a win over Eredeu from Quito would put Botafogo at the very least in second or third place instead of being last right now in the group and would put the pressure on the Junior Barranquilla and... Universitario, because now those two teams will play each other and most likely the winner of that will be in first. And if Botafogo beats LDU, Botafogo goes to second place, having two away matches, match number five and match number six against both of the uh, those two teams that I just spoke of, Universitario and Junior Barranquilla. Botafogo is probably going to have some sort of regener regenerative day today to recover some of those players um a training tomorrow and then a match this wednesday at 7 30 p.m and before i go please just hold on for a second um what is happening in the southernmost part of brazil is nothing short of tragic it is a calamity it is it is a tragedy so if you if there's ways for you to donate if there's ways for you to help in any way possible i don't know some of you guys watch from brazil some of you watch from abroad i think a majority of you might be watching from abroad but what is happening um in rio grande do sul the southernmost state in brazil it is um, very, very sad. The heavy rains have caused a lot of um, a lot of cities to go underwater. Major cities. We're looking at Grêmio Internacional and Juventude's training centers to be completely submerged underwater. You can even see the pitch in the stadium. I don't even know how those guys are going to practice. I don't know how. The Brasileirão is going to move forward from here. I think that a pause would be 
good to help those teams get on their feet because it's going to be tough for those teams. I, I just don't know. You know, there have been other tragedies um, related to the weather in Brazil, but when we're talking about proportions, I think this is pretty big. Um, not to not to take away from any uh, of the other tragedies that happen um, in the country before that are not less important just because we're focusing on this one. But I think maybe uh, CBF uh, needs to take a look at it and needs to, um, to make a decision. And I think the best decision, in my opinion, is to pause and perhaps reformulate uh, the Brasileirão back to what it was. Maybe we could do this first leg, you know, the, the teams that finish on top, they get qualified for a knockout stage and then the rest of the teams play a knockout. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's very, it's a very tough situation. And I hope uh, everybody down um, in Rio Grande do Sul can uh, come out of this um, on top and come out of this better than um, what the situation has left them with. So that is it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Um, I will be able to watch finally. Uh, Botafogo play uh, the Libertadores. I will these last two matches. I wasn't able to, but um, this one on Wednesday, I will be glued to this seat watching the game.